One of my all-time most favorite types of games are survival games. I've played a butt-ton of them over the years and spent tons of time in them too. But I owe all of my experiences with survival games, both good and bad, to none other than, no, not Minecraft, not even Oregon Trail, but Sims Castaway for the PlayStation 2. So off the bat, make your first sim, but also create four more sims this time, who we will meet later in the game. I was actually streaming this gameplay live here on YouTube by the way, and you guys in the chat were, uh, very helpful in creating the characters with me. Alright, Kron, what's this guy's name? Kron. Ulysses Ass Bottom, okay. Yes, okay. His name is Griffith? Squid- oh, f Fine! Once you've made everybody, you take some quick selfies on your boat, and then capsize and lose yourself and all your friends into the sea. We now awake on a deserted island, and are presented with our primary goal. Find your friends. But first, baby steps. We gather up some driftwood and coconuts, and build our first fire. This entire time we begin to situate ourselves, there is no music, just as God intended isolation. Just the sounds of waves and birds. Although at one point when trying my hand at spearfishing during the night, I could hear what I believe is the outcry of one of your friends elsewhere in this parcel of ocean. I tried to ignore the desperate yells for help by sampling the local berries, and I managed to poison myself a little bit, so after that I decided to venture through these thorn bushes to see what else the island has in store for me, ripping up my clothes in the process. So let's try another local delicacy. And poison myself again! This island can suck a fat one! Seriously. <sighs> At least I found some bananas. And suddenly, a fellow banana pilled friend found me! Monkey! After giving my new best friend a banana, the chat helps me name him. No, his name's Snatcher. Snatcher's way better. And another one. What's happening? No, there's a black one! And yet... There's another one! So now I had a monkey crew to keep me company and keep me sane. Snatcher, Gordon, and Gordung Blitz. With my new crew, I decided to check out the next beach, which was set with a waterfall, berry bushes, and a whole ass shipwreck, upon which we find a piece of hieroglyph, despite not being in Egypt, or having a mummy friend around from the last video. And I was missing that old mummy, so I got a hug from Gordung Blitz to cheer me up. Will you give me a hug? Because he's gonna tear my ears off. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Oh, you give me a little kiss. Which he apparently hated because he started yelling at me. Maybe that kiss got me a little too homo erectus and he doesn't swing that way. Seeing this also made Snatcher jealous, so I decided to move to beach number three, since I don't want Snatcher's monkey paws on me, trying to prime mate. Trying to... Australia Pip fuck us trying to scissor with Caesar, seize up and Caesar in order to please it, trying to get Liddy and circus me and my titty and send me Halloween with a gritty. <laughs> donkey Kong, I'm a Donkey Dong. Slap my gong with a thong. I'm the chimpanzee, I'm the chimpanzee. Pelly lifts it to my knees. A rank tan, simian and slam to Duran Duran with my banana, making it grand. Hold my cock and hand it, drill a man to start a band in the promise land and back up Darwin. Cause I know he tried to thuck us, trying to collect light with flint. Let's event flames take rock to flint. And suck my monkey dick! Anyway, the third beach has got another part of the hieroglyph, but also a pier facing the next island. So now we can build a boat and go find our friends. And leave this monkey business- God damn it! But I was starting to starve, so I decided to catch me some fish. And completely fuck that up multiple times. I don't actually know if catching the fish depends on trying to stab them at a specific angle, or if it's just RNG based on your body skill, but ultimately, I caught and cooked myself a single fish. Then we gathered some banana leaves and crafted myself some new clothes. And we found a treasure map piece. Then, as I was cooking myself another fish, Gordong just did this to flex on me, I guess. That's horrible. <laughs> what? Uh, go that fucking monkey's going crazy! He's doing fucking backflips! What the fuck? Was that Gordon? We go back into the jungle to gather some more resources, and I build myself a roof to take cover in under the rain. And then Gordon gave me a banana leaf. 
Then, to get some privacy from fucking gore dung, I build a much better full shack to sleep in. But not before two crates of supplies rock up on the shore, full of new clean clothes. We chuck on the new duds, and then with a whole bunch of resource gathering and the help of my apes, we finally build a boat to get to the second island. And by the way, this is the first time I ever got to see this animation, because when I played this as a kid, I never had the patience to gather all of that shit. So, it may not look like it, but trust me, we're doing alright. Now, this is a very strangely advanced boat, but that second island is still probably going to take us ages to get to. So, we pack some serious provisions and get ready to ship shale, ship sh set, set, sh ship sh 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 We get on the boat and head towards the island, which is going to take us, like, years, so... How about a shanty? Oh, I bid farewell to the end, we're here. We rock up to shore, we say ahoy my bitches, and we find Griffith! And I'm like, I caught a fish this big, and he's like, get fucked, and our relationship gets worse. So, yeah, not off to a great start, but at least we found one of our friends. I follow him into the wild to King Hit'em and find a crashed plane with a working radio set outside of it. And then I hit the almightiest woogie. Look at this shit. Oh my god, she's schmoovin'. We then move into the mysterious cave at the end of the trail. But then the earth quakes the second I step into it and I die. Not really, but I got fucking buried for a second. On one side of the cave is another hieroglyph and some sort of door which seemingly requires a round key, which I don't have yet. So we'll come back to this. But on the other side of the cave are a few carvings of fish and llamas, as well as an alien bestowing a sim crystal to said llamas. I wonder what the lore is here. Like, do the gems act as mind control devices that the aliens gave to llamas to use on humans? Because the only time you see a gem is when you are controlling a sim, and every other sim just acts out their own lives, until you stick a gem above them. So, are we the aliens? Or are we llamas? Basically, I think this should be taken to Congress until it's solved. Anyway, we climb this bit, and then we get to another little bit of jungle where we find clay and a fuck ton of different fruits, including lychees. Then onwards, we find a larger, more open area with a chicken. Onwards again, we find a big skull-shaped rock and yet another hieroglyph. Then just as my social meter was severely declining, I found Billy, who I'd already decided I'm going to try to hook up with by the end of the game. <laughs> Nearby, there is a giant canyon. We could either spend a bunch of time building a bridge to cross it, or just scale down the side of the cliff and then climb back up and then get to the next part of the jungle. So, quick jungle crunk and down the cliff we go. On the other side of the canyon we find more fruits and shit, and even some cotton. Then we find a new beach, and finally find Ulysses Ass Bottom, who shows me to another pier where we can launch a canoe, to try to get to the third and final island. I then spent probably the whole next hour running around and gathering even more resources while trying to keep myself alive. And that entire time I was talking to you guys on stream, which was a lot of fun. We discussed future video ideas and games and all sorts of stuff. And you could have been there too. So if you want to join me next time we play a game live, then consider subscribing and belling me so that you'll know next time we go live. Please, I'm trying to, I'm trying to hit the 1000 subs mark, please. Apparently I was such a musty bitch this whole time that other sims were actually avoiding me and my social stat was declining. So I had to go take a bath in some cave water and chat up Billy for like an hour. By the way, you've probably seen me pick up like a fuck ton of different types of fruits and veggies at this point. I just don't understand where this island is supposed to be that has the climate for all this shit. Like, it's tropical, because we got coconuts and bananas and shit, but we also have like chili and ginger and potatoes and lychees and crap. There is like actually like a million types of food in this game, and I feel like you'd only find them all together in the woolies or something. So maybe the sims have actually been captured, and we're all just in some Truman Show Matrix type shit. And now we're back to this point in the video where I say I fucking hate dealing with sims needy little needs every fucking minute. So once again, for the sake of this video, that's right, we're gonna cheat! Using any cheats in this game summons a cheat gnome, which will from now on appear in every single area like it's stalking you. Some areas even seem to have a spot made just for the gnome itself. But thank the lord, we finally made the canoe, so now we can get to the third island. How about another long shanty for another long voyage? Santiana, get in the mind. The third island was actually a volcano, and the ancient architecture that stands forebodingly around it alludes to the ancient race of llama people, who I guess were colluding with the aliens as we mentioned before. I really didn't know that The Sims as a franchise was this fucking insane. As it turns out, there was some more whack shit in the rest of The Sims games, so if you want me to melt even more brain cells over this franchise, like this video and peer pressure me into it, I guess.
Anyway, as well as hints to a race of goose girls, we also find Squidward and Amanda. And there's note in a bottle about breeding coconuts with shoes. Quick nap on the floor in the rain. And we scale the cliffside to reach the jungle above, which also has even more random fruits from all over the world, like papayas and cherries. I have no idea why there was so much food in this game. The easiest thing to do is to just eat fish. Like, huh? Why, why do we need this? I don't get it. But look at this shit. We got a hot spring. And look, I can call people over into the hot tub with me. And luckily, my babe Billy was nearby, so I called her to join me. And it actually improves our relationship. And it seems Amanda wanted to join us as well. We three hot chicks in a hot tub eating fucking papayas and random ingredients and shit. Defining girl dinner. This shit is boss as fuck. Until dipshit comes to join us and we all get out. And then a hieroglyph encourages me to raw dog a handful of soap and I vomit. Girl dessert. Oh yeah, by the way, Squidward and Amanda were diddling. Apparently hard enough to send Amanda crawling up the mountain like fucking Gollum or something. Moving on to the next area, we find the geyser plane. With more chicken and corn and basically just a large flat area for building probably. We also find the last piece of hieroglyph. And this dent in this door thing that is very obviously meant for all of the hieroglyph pieces to be thrust into. And what do you know, the door is now open. And inside we find the ancient llama temple. There's ancient statues and lava flowing through the walls and even a throne, which doesn't do anything when you sit on it. There is, however, a broken lava forge in the center of the room. We can't fix it now, but we'll come back to it later. Outside the temple is some guava and cacao trees, and around the corner from that is an outdoor theater for rituals or some shit. There is also a cliff face which invites me to jump off of it. But apparently, I'm not buff enough to do a gay Tony, so we'll have to come back to that later too. So we climb back down to the other side of the cliff and we find a new open area. Poison myself one more time and I find a very nice view and some more hot springs. Maybe this is where I'll set up camp for a bit. So once again, I begin gathering some resources. When we picked it back up, I asked my beloved to join my tribe. Which means that now I can actually play as her and give her jobs to do around home base. I then crafted a ton of new tools, including a fishing rod so I can catch bigger fish. I then recruited Amanda and Squidward into the tribe to help up keep the camp. And then we decided to finally build it. In this game, you can build custom bases part by part like I'm doing here, or you can use preset building plans, which I'll show you later. What we built first was basically just a little 5x7 bamboo shack, set with an actual bed and a table set. Now you can just tell me that I have a case of bamboo shack fever, but I actually really do like building in this game. The system isn't great for today's standards, but back then, for this level of customization and all the options you have, it's pretty impressive. And it does have its own little cozy feeling to it. It's as if you've just run off into the wilderness to go camping and build a cubby house with your mates. Fuck, I want to do that. 10,000 likes and I will do exactly this. I will run into the wilderness and build a cubby house with my mates. 10,000 likes and I'll do it. Anyway, trying to calm down, I went fishing and did this somehow. What? What the fuck? <laughs> Bro, I'm reeling for it. Jesus Christ. Anyway, by this point, I wanted to build cooler shit. But in order to do so, I had to raise my creativity skill. So it's not like there's any art schools around. How am I going to raise my creativity skill? I had to stand here and play the maracas for three days straight! But with that newfound creativity, I built my tribe a sick little fire pit area with some love seats. Which I had to move because they kept lighting themselves on fire. So I guess creativity doesn't equal intelligence. I also decorated the area with all the mini llama statues we collected so far. Plus that airplane radio so we can get jiggy with it. The finishing touch, the um... Duron Torque 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 What did Antonio Bandera say? Darun Torque, just to give a touch. That's the, the, the translation is to just touch something. Darun Torque is... Uh... That thing. The final that thing was a home tiki, which would then allow my tribe to know that this was the area that they should be hanging out and working. So to get to the next locations, I needed to work out and increase my body skill. So what better way to do that than to go back to the cave on island 2 and smack a rock of obsidian for fucking years. Now, I will emerge from this cave like Jesus with a sick new bod, but I'm not free of sin. This is when I have to admit something. I had used cheats to give myself an infinite supply of any material that I had collected up to this point, which apparently included treasure map pieces. So without actually collecting all the map pieces legit, I was able to find the treasure of Beard Beard the Pirate early. 
So, it's a good thing we've been working out for 10 years, because we have to move this big-ass rock out of the way, and we find the hidden cove, with another full-on shipwreck. Up on top of the quarterdeck, we find that the ship doesn't even have a wheel. No wonder they crashed. But more so than that, there was a treasure chest with a full pirate fit and Beardbeard's personal cutlass. How fucking sick is that? And as far as I can tell, by the way, these clothes never rip, which is a nice perk, but now I look badass. We discover that this tunnel actually leads to behind the skull rock from earlier, opening up another shortcut. I feel like that would have been more useful earlier. Same goes for this bridge. I then used the obsidian I got earlier to make myself some new tools with my sword, which apparently wasn't imposing enough because this boar tried to attack me and I one shot him like <coughs> I went back to the cave to get some more reps in and Squidward started giving Billy a massage right in front of me and then I was like yo what the fuck and our friendship went from 100 to negative 22 I apologize a few times for whatever I did and then obsess over her for an hour getting our relationship back up to 98 before she rightfully climbs out of there to escape me and leave my chiseled obsidian smacking Greek god bod behind. Back to base camp and I got Billy and I's relationship back up to 100 real quick. And then I proposed to her in the rain. And she fucking rejected me. That hurt. Up the volcano we go now to sacrifice myself. Up the top of the volcano is a couple of rocks of ore and obsidian. We can also see the other islands from up here. There's also another doorway inside the maw of the volcano. That is actually just a shortcut back to the interior of the temple. But I do find a llama crown, and it doesn't do anything in here, but I can fix the forge so we can make glass and metal tools now. Which shakes the fucking earth again, and reveals to me that a fourth and final island has risen out of the ocean. We'll check that out shortly, but now it's time for me to jump off a cliff for real, as I still haven't recovered from Billy. Holy shit. Turns out that one of the map pieces that I was not supposed to cheat in earlier, is in the belly of a shark in these waters. So, as to make up for cheating, I fish up the shark anyway and then eat it. There was also yet another beach, with another pier for another boat. But this actually was a bigger deal, as if we decide to make a boat and launch from here, we'll actually escape the island and make it back to civilization. But I haven't got all the resources for it yet, and I'm not quite done here. With the promise of escape and a shark currently sizzling in my rhinoceros bladder, I decide to propose to Billy once again. And once again, she rejects me immediately. But she does give me a clue. See that hat icon? What it means is that I have to make a marital flower lay and a beanie, and then propose to her. But first, I need to figure out how to make those things. But I have a few things I need to check first. Item 1 being a use for the llama crown, and I just figured it out. I put it on my head and then stick my fucking head in this hole in an ancient door which is now moving in a cave which has already collapsed on me and with some astronomical luck, nothing kills me and I open the door. Why didn't I just take the crown off and put it in with my hands? Ugh. Anyway, beyond the door we find the ancient pleasure palace, set with fountains and a river and that's pretty much it. There's barely any space to build and the river doesn't go anywhere. But it does have one thing. Flowers. More specifically, white and red hibiscus. The ingredients to my wedding accessories. But, Billy is pissed at me again. I don't even know why now. She just showed up and sent our relationship back to negative seven. Electing to ignore these blaringly bright red flags, I decide I must make the wedding lay and beanie right this instant, and then fix our relationship before she runs away, then propose right here, right now. So I make the marital drip, and then I'm right back to speed running, falling in love again. The rain begins to scream, the thunder begins to shout, and the monkeys go ooh ooh ah ah. And then I get down on one knee and confess my love one more time. And she rejects me again. God fucking damn it, love me! Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. I fucking, I, I, I forgot to make the lay of eloping, so I gave her up some more flowers and make the lay, and then that wombat fuck begins serenading her again. I'm against the clock now. I tried to make the lay as Billy, but she didn't know how. But when I went to turn back into my main girl, she abandoned me. So back at base camp, and back in my own skin, and then back out of it, and then into Billy so I can put this fucking lay on her. But this time it's gotta be it. Let's do this. One last time. It's raining again. Romantically. Like the notebook. I back her into a corner with no escape. Lovingly. Like the Blair Witch Project. This is the fourth time I get down on this knee. 
And it's gotta be the last, because I've proposed so many times, it's starting to get arthritis. And then... It's a YES! See, I knew she loved me from the start. You doubted me. You doubted it. She only rejected me three times because you doubted me. And without your doubt, this time, I made it. Okay? So, fuck you. <sighs> Friends, if they say no, keep asking. Until she tries to run away and then force thorns around her neck, put her in a room with no doors, so our only option is to marry you. Now that's true love right there. I then felt it was finally time to go check out the mysterious fourth island that rose from the sea. So back to island one we go. The island is just a short doggy paddle away from the shore, and here we are. This tiny little island has nothing useful except for some infinite sources of sand and clay, plus another map bit. Decorating the island is an array of massive green gems. Maybe this is where the aliens harvested the ones right above our head. But why did the island only rise when I repaired that forge in the temple? There is another rock carving here of an alien meditating. I didn't know he was chill like that. Another thing I didn't know is that if you take the plane radio and transmit it to this island and use it to send an SOS while your motives are low, you will get abducted by the aliens and then drop straight back down again, except now you'll be in perfect condition. Now, if you saw the Sims 2 DS video, you'll remember that if you get abducted in that game, you get probed without consent. Yet these guys in Castaway stick you in like that machine from Elysium or some shit. You, you know what I'm talking about? Like, the dude's head gets blown up and then they put him in a pod and he's like completely fine afterward or whatever. Anyway, all I'm saying is that so far in my Sims adventures, these aliens are the most based. I then decide to move camp to a fresh plot of land right outside the temple entrance and build a manor bungalow. A very expensive pre-built house that looks swaggin'. I build a fire and erect a new home tiki so that my tribe will come over here and help me build. And soon enough our home was complete. Set with a shower and a dunny, some beds and rugs and shit, and even a dining room with a full on oven. The oven allows you to cook four ingredients into one large pot of food that all your sims can come and take portions of. And you can even make soil and grow more crops for your stews outside. I decided to treat my team for helping me build, and I finally crafted clothes for everyone. We're living big now. A whole dripped out team, my family and monkeys, and even my beloved Billy, until she dumps me again. But finally, it was time to take one last look at our home, and take the cool guy's way out. Not via sending out an SOS with the plane radio from way earlier, but by another fucking boat! Now this is the end of the game, so... Maybe we'll actually get a longer animation this time. Maybe they might be paddling and pushing each other off the boat, jerking around and stuff. So you know what? I think we got time for a shanty, finally. What? Nope, we got a cutscene. Look at my crew. Look at how badass we are. We got stranded and came back better than we were than when we went in. Well, the left side of us did. I, I don't know what the fuck is going on with Amanda and Shaggy over there. I think I just completely forgot about them. Anyway, now we get a cutscene of Amanda of all people going back to a normal home, and then it uses the opportunity to remind us of how shit modern life is compared to what we just went through, I guess? I think someone at EA just played Fallout and heard the bonga 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 ones are happy in the Congo I refused to go and took it to heart. Although, I do agree. And that's it! The game just drops you back on the island and is like, well, if you want to keep playing, you can, but that's it, loser, and yeah, now you're done! But just like last time, we got some extras to talk about, so hang in there! Okay, so I did not know about this until I was writing this script, but it turns out that when this game came out in 2007, EA actually made a few trailers and posted them on YouTube, which, mind you, had pretty much just started around this time. But you gotta see this. They didn't give us a formal introduction to the tropical setting and the survival aspect of the spin-off or anything. No, we didn't get anything like that at all. What we got is this. It opens up with the lone chime of a church bell. An abandoned house. Phones ringing. No one to answer. Storming. No one's on the news. Really weird fucking cat scratching the door. A teddy bear in the rain. Pets digging through trash. fucking house explodes. No cars on the bridge. No one's in town. Then this lighthouse transition. That 
is actually fucking creepy. They make it look like the rapture has come or some shit and the world's ending, all for the game where you juggle monkeys and eat fruit. But there's more, like another one where they emphasize the wrong words with subtitles. You have three choices. Or this one, where they make it look like the most exciting episode of Survivor or something. <laughs> then there's another one, where they pretty much just mock your Valley Girl sim. What isn't, like, really important, really is, like, important. And like, vice versa. Then drop this hard fucking PNG. Anyway, as I was saying at the beginning of this video, I'm a big survival game guy, and it all begun with this game. Despite the fact I never made it past the first island when I played it as a kid. Where Sims 2 for the DS would creep me out, Sims 2 Castaway for the PS2 would chill me out. It is strange and sometimes it tries to be a bit mysterious, but really it's just nice. The sound design and soundtrack being both quietly peaceful and upbeat are great. Plus, while the graphics are, well, you know, on PS2, it does look kinda nice still. Since this game came out, there's probably been a bajillion more survival games that do it all better. Better mysteries, better mechanics, better customization and story and such else. But at the time that this game came out, the only real other survival games were stuff like Lost in Blue or Oregon Trail. And for not having much precedent to the genre, Having food and gathering mechanics as well as customization, stats, multiple characters, and building is kinda crazy when you think about it. But now that I've completed it and seen all there is to see about it, I can finally stop thinking about this game and tick it off the video game bucket list. And who knows? Maybe you should tick it off yours too. Okay, so since we're at the end of the video, I just have to tell you about this. So, before we'd play this game on the channel, I'd never streamed anything properly, but The Sims 2 DS video hit hit 9,000 views at that time, so I was like, oh, you know, maybe I'll stream The Sims Castaway for a little bit, maybe some people will show up. You know, some a little, just a little stream. We went for 11 hours fucking straight, because you guys kept showing up, kept chatting to me, and kept me entertained the entire time. You kept me awake for 11 hours straight. We started at 11pm, and finished 11 hours later. It, the sun was up midway through the stream. We went for so long, in fact, that my TV died and I had to throw it out. When we started the stream, my mate was watching a little bit before he went to bed, right? And then when I fell asleep on stream, he was calling me from work the next day to try to wake me up. So he watched a bit of the stream, went to bed, got a full eight hours, had shower, had a breakfast, had a wank, went into work and was at work by the time that the stream ended. All because I decided, in a very smart move, that I would keep streaming until the Sims 2 DS video hit 10,000 views. And at about 9.30 the next day or some shit like that, it finally hit it. The Sims 2 DS video hit 10,000 views. And at the time that I'm recording this audio, that Sims 2 DS video has now hit very nearly 30,000 views. What the fuck? How, why would you click on that thumbnail? Did you see the thumbnail? That is so ugly. Why did you click on that? But yeah, thanks for watching the video and all the likes and shit. And we got so many comments of people just talking about the game and discussing it and all that kind of crap. And it's been so cool. We got like 650 subscribers now for like one video pretty much. That's insane. But um, yeah, thank you. We've got a nice little fucking hilarious little community we've got going on now. So... Yeah, if you're not part of the community yet, but maybe you like the video, then consider subscribing. And, you know, if you want to get onto the Discord server, the link's in my bio. And, yeah, we've got a lot to do now. You guys have suggested a bunch of other Sims games. I'm yet to even play a normal Sims game, so we'll probably do that at some point. And there is a lot more weird shit that I want to show you guys. A bunch of weird old games, a bunch of survival games, lots of different, like, elements of games. Just more challenges and shit like that, maybe. And, yeah, we'll probably keep streaming since that one was a success. And, um, yeah, stick around and see what happens. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.
I thought I heard the old man say, Leave her, Johnny, leave her. Tomorrow you will get your pain. It's time for us to leave her. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. Or leave her, Johnny, leave her. For the voyage is long and winter blame. It's time for us to leave her. Oh, the wind was fell on the zero and I said, Leave her, Johnny, leave her. And she did. Ah! Ah! Ah!